All right, so you're gonna get onto moving the enemies. And real quick before this video starts, I won't be uploading as much because of school. Continuing on, uh, we're gonna be moving enemies. And right now we're just gonna focus on setting up real quick. So immediately off the bat, we're going to install a job system package. And I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, install the job system package. Uh, if in order for you to see it, you're going to have to uh, go to your advanced project settings and enable preview packages in order to see it so you can actually install it. So I already have it installed, so um, I can get straight into coding it. So let's go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is finish up uh, some little things that I missed last episode. And the first thing is uh, in my remove enemy function. Uh, when you remove an enemy, you're going to have to also remove it from the enemies in game list. So uh, enemies in game dot remove and you take your enemy to remove and put it in there. Simple like that. Also in the enemy class, we're going to create a new variable. It's going to be called a public int of a node index. And this is for the movement of our enemy. So it can navigate through the different nodes in uh, our path that we have set up. And lastly, in the game loop manager, we're going to create a public static void and call this nq enemy to remove. And it's going to take an enemy class and call this enemy to remove. And inside of here, we're going to create a separate queue. So a separate private static queue. And it's going to be of enemy and it's going to be called enemies to remove Q or just enemies to remove yeah, get rid of the Q at the end so there enemies to remove and underneath our uh, remove enemies comment in our game loop we're going to do if enemies to remove account is greater than zero then we will simply iterate over all of the enemies in our queue and remove them so uh, we just we can just simply copy our loop here and just replace a couple couple parts so enemy IDs to summon becomes enemies to remove see over here enemies to remove dot DQ and our entity summoner dot uh, remove enemy now we have to go uh, into our function here and actually enqueue our enemy to remove so enemies to remove dot NQ and we pass in the enemy to remove parameter and there you go uh, that is removing and spawning enemies all set up in our loop all right, so now let's get into the move enemies part of the loop. So to start off, we're going to create a new public static vector three array. And this is going to be called our node positions. And this is to get all the positions of each of our nodes um, in our scene. So our enemies can have a reference to a position that they can move to. So there, yeah. so node positions. And we're also going to create a public transform variable and this is going to be called the node parent and this is so we can populate our node positions array based off of the children of this node parent so in our start function before we run the loop we can do um, node positions equals a new vector3 array and inside of here we do node parent dot child count so uh, the count of every node underneath so Nope. And after we uh, initialize our array, we simply iterate over it and set all the positions. So for an i is equal to zero, i is less than node positions dot length, i plus plus. And inside of here, we do node positions i equals node parent dot get child uh, with the index of i dot position. And there you go. We populate our node positions array. Another thing we're going to have to set up real quick is through our entity summoner. So so the way we're going to be moving enemies in our game here is using the ijob parallel for transform interface from the job systems. So to do that, we're going to need a reference to an array of all the transforms uh, of the enemies in our game. So to do that, we just create a separate list, so a public static list of transform, and we can call this enemies in game transform. And of course, we have to initialize this in our init function. So enemies in game transform equals a new list of transform. And in our summon and remove enemy, we're going to have to uh, synchronously um, add and remove from this list uh, with our enemies in game list. So enemies in game transform 
just above our enemies in game we just do enemy games transform dot add we put in our summoned enemy dot transform and same for remove enemy so enemy is in, so enemies in game transform dot remove and put in the enemy to remove there so there you go so now we have um, a list of all the enemy transforms that can be used by the job system in order to move all the enemies so now back in the loop manager uh, we're going to now uh, finally get started on putting some code in our move enemies comment or part of the loop so we're going to create a couple of native arrays uh, the first one is going to be type uh, using the type of int and this will be a uh, node index or node indices and this will be a new native array of int and it's going to take in a couple of parameters but to see them properly you have to use the namespace so which is unity.collections which is from the job system package so yeah we're going to create the node indices we're also going to create another native array of float and this will be of enemy speed enemy speeds we're also going to create a native array of vector 3 and this is going to be the uh, nodes in the game or yeah job nodes in game or whatever so yeah just I'll just say nodes uh, to use and we're also going to need a transform access array and this will be called the enemy access equals a new transform access array and of course this comes from the unity engine.jobs namespace so don't forget that which is also a part of the job system package and now that we have everything generally all set up we can now work on uh, putting in the parameters to actually uh, properly initialize each of our native arrays and transform access arrays here so the first thing for the nodes to use we just simply pass in our node uh, positions and after that we do allocator.tempjob to indicate that this is only going to be used for a single job and this uh, allocator is going to be used across the, all of these native arrays so for the enemy speeds oh, whoops. there don't forget that and now for the enemy speeds we got to do entity summoner dot enemies in game dot counts and allocator dot temp job so you don't have a specific array for all the speeds and node indices so after we declare all these variables we're simply going to just populate them using a for loop so the same parameters go for our node indices here and for our enemy access we do entity summoner dot enemies in game transform dot two array and for the desired job count uh, this is basically the number of job threads that will be used for this transform access and I'll just stick with uh, two for now let's just stick with two now let's uh, populate our node indices and enemy speeds so to do that as I said before we're just gonna use a for loop we can do for int i is equal to zero i is less than entity summoner dot enemies in game dot count i plus plus and instead of here we're going to do enemy speeds i equal to the entity summoner enemies in game i dot speed and the node indices will be the same here so node indices i equals entity summoner dot enemies in game i dot node index and there you go we basically finished populating all of our native arrays and they are now ready to be used by a job system but before we get on to uh, coding our job system just to be safe, we're going to uh, dispose all of these, or create a part of the code to where it disposes all these native arrays, so we don't have to worry about this later. And the reason why we're doing this is because all of these native arrays and collections uh, from the job system uh, have to be manually managed through code. So now let's actually make our job system. So at the bottom of your game loop manager, we're going to create a public struct and this is going to be called move enemies job and this will inherit from i job parallel for transform quickly implement the interface it wants get rid of that and let's make our variables so first we're going to need all of these native arrays over here so just do public native array of int and we can call this node indices or node index 
We're also going to need a public native array of floats for the speeds. So we do enemy speeds, or just enemy speed. We also need a public native array for vector 3 for all the node positions. Quickly sort these from tallest to shortest. We'll also need a public float for delta time. And I believe that is all. So now for each of these, we're going to add an attribute to them to prevent any weird errors that I keep getting when I uh, use this method. And that is called native disable parallel for restriction. Now inside of our execute function, we're going to create a vector three. And we're gonna call this position to move to. And this is basically going to be our node positions. And we're going to index it with our node index um, native array. And we're going to finally pass in the execute methods index parameter. After that, we're going to now use this transform parameter here. So do transform.position. And we're going to use the vector3.move to method. So vector3.move towards. And instead of here, we're going to do our transform.position and pass in our target position, which is the position to move to. And for the max distance delta, this is the enemy speed. Uh, put in our index and multiply this by the delta time variable we have. And after we do all the moving, we're going to check uh, if our transform.position is equal to the position to move to so we can increment our node index. So to do this, we just do if transform.position is equal to position and move to, then we're going to do a uh, node index of passing the index to get the node uh, value, and we just do plus plus at the end. And there you go. That is generally all the code for our move enemies job. Now we can actually create a new instance of this job and run it. So back in our move enemies uh, part of the loop, we're going to create a new instance of our job so move enemies job and just call this move job equals a new move enemies job and we're simply going to assign all the variables inside so for the node positions this will of course be our nodes to use variable that we have in our loop for the enemy speed this will be a reference to our enemy speeds variable for the node index this will be a reference to our node indices variable and delta time is going to be time dot delta time and the reason why we're doing time dot delta time through here uh, through our initialization on our I enumerator here is because uh, when we're multi-threading we cannot use time dot delta time we cannot uh, use that so we have to do it on the main thread here while we're initializing our move job all right so once the move job is now initialized we'll do move job dot uh, schedule and this returns a uh, job handle, so we can do job handle uh, and do, I guess, move job handle. Set that to the move job dot schedule. Don't forget to use unity dot jobs. And instead of here, we gotta pass in our transform access array. So we just quickly plug that in, and there you go. We are scheduling our job handle. And once it's all scheduled, we do move job handle dot complete, and there you go. We're basically now moving enemies. And after the job system completes, we're going to want to set all of the indexes and any data that the job handle uh, modified to our enemy classes. So to do that, we do a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than, of course, the entity summoner dot enemies in game dot count, i plus plus. And inside of here, we're going to first assign the node index, and then we're going to check if the node index is equal to the length of our nodes to use. And if it is equal to the length of our nodes to use, then we're basically going to mark that enemy to be removed. So first we're going to assign all of the node indexes. So to do that, we just do uh, entity summoner enemies in game i dot node index equals the node indices variable and we put our i index in here and there you go and after that we're going to do an if statement which will just simply check if the node index is the length of our 
uh, nodes to use. So to do that, we just quickly take grab this is equal to the node positions dot length. Then we'll mark the enemy to be removed because it has reached the end of the map. So we use our function here and queue enemy to remove. And inside of here, we pass in our enemy variable. And there you go. All right, so now that all of this stuff is generally complete, we can now just do a little bit of quick um, preparation. So first, we need to initialize our enemies to remove queue, since we haven't done that already in our code. So enemies to remove equals a new queue of enemy. And in our job, to prevent any sort of weird errors, sometimes um, the node index that we get is uh, when our enemy, let's say, reaches the length and it just runs again. So to quickly check if um, it's at the right length or if the node index is um, not greater than the length or equal to the length, we simply just do a quick if statement. So we just do if node index index uh, is less than the node positions dot length, then we will do all of this movement. And also in our entity summoner class, uh, when we summon enemies, we're going to have to replace our vector 3.0 here, where we instantiate enemies, and we're going to put in our game loop manager dot uh, node positions and pass in zero. And also in our enemy class, well, in our init function, we're going to set manually set the transform position to the uh, first node in the scene. So to do that, we just do transform dot position equals game loop manager dot node positions zero. And there you go. That should be it for um, moving enemies uh, with the job system for a tower defense tutorial. So let's go back into Unity two set one more thing up and that is a node parent so make sure you assign your node parent oh and one more thing we're going to want to get rid of our remove test here so quickly get rid of that and we don't we don't need this anymore and also back in our enemy class uh, when we do the init function make sure we set our node index to zero so it's completely reset to the beginning of the path and there you go now if we go back into unity to run our code you can now see enemies moving along our path and this is all accomplished with the Unity job system. So you could see they're going through the path that I planned out. You know, they're going uh, down all the way back up and looping back through until they reach the end. And once they do reach the end, they will then, you can see in the inspector also, um, you can see some are being deactivated. Like, um, let me quickly pause it, go frame by frame. Let me just make the enemy get up to the end. Oh, uh, once he reaches the end, there you go. You could see that it has been bet put back into the queue. And thanks to this uh, method of spawning in enemies, you can see how uh, there's no need to instantiate new instances. It is just going through the list of uh, dequeuing and requeuing. And it's like um, it has the right amount of enemies uh, going through the path so it can um, use any enemies that reach the end to the point where it doesn't need to create new instances. And yeah, that is all for this video. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next uh, tutorial. Goodbye.